Good morning. This is Dr. Paul Gear. Um, I'm coming to you here from the Dauphin Island Sea Lab in Alabama. I'm a faculty member at Huntington College where I teach biology and I'm here today to talk to you folks about one of my favorite animals in the whole world, certainly in the Gulf Coast. This little guy, the blue crab, and I had the choice of picking any animal to talk about. I just love blue crabs because of their attitude, the fact that they taste good, and the fact that in a match between me and a blue crab, he can probably win and beat me up. I want to I wanna take this guy out and show you a couple things about blue crabs. And I'm going to net him and then use something I call the smoosh technique to handle them without getting pinched. So there's our little blue crab. I just smoosh him with a towel and then there are different ways of grabbing them. Um, one way is I can grab them with these, they're called swimming legs back here, the flippers you might call them. The other way is sometimes I like to grab them by the pinchers. It's a little tricky. And have I ever been pinched by a blue crab? Absolutely. But this allows me to show you the bottom of the blue crab. And that little pointy thing right there is called the apron. And that allows me to tell that this is a boy. There's two shapes of apron that a blue crab can have. If it's shaped like this, kind of like the Eiffel Tower, um, skinny at the top, that's a boy. If it's shaped like one of the pyramids of Egypt, straight-sided and big triangular, that's a female. If it's kind of a, a pyramid that looks like a giant stepped on it and smooshed it, that's a, an adult female who's ready to breed. And the other way you can tell male from female is if it's an adult-sized blue crab and it pinches you, if you scream so loud they can hear you three blocks away, that was a male. They tend to be bigger. So here's our little guy. Um, anytime during this show this morning, you guys can chime in with questions and I will answer those questions. I'm gonna put this guy back in his little tub. There we go. And while we're watching him and waiting for you guys to pose questions, I'm gonna get out one of our bigger blue crabs and show you that. Because this guy's only half size. He's a junior size blue crab. So how is it harder to get the bigger crabs? Well, let's see. Um, yeah, it is. They have an attitude. So in this tank, I've got a male and a female, and I can tell them apart from above because the, you might be able to see this. The female over here in the corner, she has red claws. The male's claws tend to be blue. Uh, those, uh, the little apron underneath will still have that distinctive shape. Let's go ahead and just sort of try to get one of these guys up just a little bit. Ooh. And you can see they're fast. In fact, they are such good swimmers that their scientific name is Kalanectes saphidus. And if you translate that from Latin, Kalanectes means beautiful swimmer. Saphidus means savory, so it translates as the beautiful swimmer who also happens to be good to eat. So here's our male blue crab, and why don't I reach down and just grab him with my fingers? Well, you come and try that, and you tell me why I won't do that. Um, they have a very strong pinch. They do draw blood. Um, but what I love about blue crabs and why I wanted to talk to them, to uh, talk with you about them today, is they are the most marvelous in your face, awesome crustacean you can find. A lot of other crustaceans, they hide from you or they're friendly like a hermit crab. You can pick up a hermit crab, hold it in your hand, no problem. These guys, problem. Also, ghost crabs come out at night on the beach. They're the, the whitish gray crabs that you see running around a sandy beach. They're neat, uh, they're a lot of fun too, but you can easily handle a ghost crab just by grabbing it side by side on the carapace, no problem. Blue crabs? problem. Um, I'm drawn to animals. I've always been a big fan of animals that can take care of themselves. Uh, my first love, the, the first animal I fell in love with when I was a kid growing up in Idaho was a rattlesnake. And I guess blue crabs are kind of like the rattlesnakes of the ocean because they can hurt you, 
But they give you a nice warning before they do. They raise their claws in a big display. And one of the things I wanted to talk with you guys about today is how you kind of interpret the mood of a blue crab. Let's let this guy back in the, in the tank and let's get the female. If we can scoop so her if out. So work on getting the female, we do have a question of why are some bluer than others? That is a really good question. If, if the question is referring to the overall color of the carapace, which is the big part of the shell that you see here, um, I think it may depend to some extent on how recently they've molted. Uh, blue crabs have to molt 20 or more times to get to adult size. And between those molts, they don't grow at all. So a freshly molted blue crab may be slightly different color than one that um, molted a long time ago. In general, though, they tend not to be real bright blue. The name blue crab comes from the fact that some of the the limbs uh, have blue highlights, and overall they're kind of bluish. You can see on this beautiful female with her red claws in the front, her um, swimming claws at the back are quite bright blue. Um, I think it may be individual variation, just genetic variation as well. I have noticed that some are bright blues, even within the same size range. That's a good question, though. Do they have to be blue to be a blue crab? They don't. Um, you can have blue crabs that are kind of dingy colored. Um, when they're little, you might notice that guy, the little guy that we started our talk with this morning, he's kind of tannish brown. They kind of tend to pick up the blue color when they're older <laughs> and bigger. So going back to talking about their mood. Sure. Um, right now, if I'm watching that female swim away from me, and what she's doing is, uh, a moment ago, she was giving what I call a half merrill display. Um, a full merrill is where the, the blue crab opens up both of its claws and spreads them out, almost like um, a referee signaling a touchdown or the completion of a field goal kick. That's called a merrill display. And you might see her do that if I kind of get the net close to her. There you go. She's not doing a merrill display at the moment. But they often do that display at other blue crabs. Um, they will spread their arms wide. It can be a display saying, hey, don't mess with me. Um, either I'm bigger than you, or it can be don't mess with me because you're obviously bigger than me and I don't want to fight you. So that display is, is one of the signals they send to each other. So you have a shout out from Jesse, Jessica Lins, who took class with you two summers ago, and she said she remembers dealing with these guys. Um, and you do a cool project with the students during class where y'all talk about um, the type of marine behavior. All look at how they work together. Yeah, what we do in my course that I teach here at the Sea Lab, I teach a course called Marine Behavioral Ecology, and it's good to hear from one of my old students chiming in. Um, what we do with the Blue Crab Lab is we set up little kitty wading pools, the kind that you played in when you were just five years old and your parents filled up in the backyard with a garden hose. What we'll do is we'll set out a bunch of kitty wading pools, fill them with seawater, and then put crabs in each kitty wading pool. And then the students get to practice scoring the behaviors, and we often do a test in which we look at um, aggressive behaviors that the crabs do as a result of kind of the size difference between them. The idea being that if two blue crabs are very different in size, they might fight and be less aggressive. They might fight less and have less aggression than if they're closely matched in size. So we have a couple of questions just in general on blue crabs. Um, Kelsey's asking, how many eggs can a blue crab lay at once? Blue crabs are amazing reproductive machines. Um, a female typically reproduces just once. Sometimes in, in good conditions, she may be able to reproduce twice. Males mate with lots of females, but females tend to mate just once um, per season at least, and often once per lifetime. But that one mating can get them from literally one million to almost 20 million eggs. Uh, what happens is they mate during uh, the summer months, 
and she may wait to release those eggs until the following year. But during, uh, before she le releases the eggs, she develops this gigantic growth underneath that's called a sponge. And that sponge is actually the egg mass. And it can have, like I said, one to 20 million eggs. Um, she keeps that guarded until um, conditions are just right. And she releases those millions of babies into the water. Most of them won't make it, of course. Uh, most of them drift out to sea. They become part of the plankton that sustains the gulf. But those that drift back in, especially in estuary, estuary areas like around Dauphin Island, those um, can settle and start to grow. And they grow and they molt and they grow and they molt. And again, it takes about 20 molts to get to full adult size for a blue crab. So what is the range of the blue crab? They are all over the Atlantic Ocean from Canada all the way down to South America. So it's a very wide ranging species. Ava, who's 12, she asks again, what is the scientific name of the blue crab? It is Kalinectes sapidus, which again means beautiful swimmer, savory and delicious. Uh, Mariana asks, there are oyster farms now, but is there a You know, that's a really good question. Aquaculture is becoming more of a thing. Um, and that's such a good question that I'm really not sure I know the answer. I'm not an aquaculture specialist. Um, to my knowledge, there is a blue crab aquaculture facility. I, I could check. Uh, I, right over um, just 50 yards from where I'm standing is a facility owned by Auburn University. They tend to work almost exclusively with um, oysters. But some folks over there would certainly know of any blue crab aquaculture projects. Right now, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most blue crabs that are harvested, and there are a lot of them harvested, come from just wild caught populations. Like in Chesapeake Bay, there's a famously huge fishery up there. A lot of blue crabs harvested around Chesapeake Bay. So getting back to the moves of the blue crab, who's more aggressive, a male or a female? The male. <clears throat> And the reason is because um, one of the things that's different for a male blue crab compared to a female is he has to fight for access to a mate. Any female that is of reproductive size is pretty much guaranteed she's going to find a boyfriend. But a male of reproductive size is not guaranteed that he can find a girlfriend. So there's often competition for the females. And the biggest male is able to find a female that's molts and essentially guard her. The way this works is very interesting. Let me, let me scoop up my boy while I'm talking about the reproduction of a blue crab. Come on, little boy. Don't pinch me, please. Bonus points for no blood on this. <laughs> all right, here he is, not liking me at all. Tell you what, let's put him in this um, tank over here so we have a better view of him. There we go. I want to be gentle. All right. They sometimes get stuck. There we go. All right. So what will happen during the mating season, which is summer months at Dauphin Island? And again, this is a boy. I can tell by the blue. Um, on his pinchers, and he would have the, the Eiffel Tower shaped apron underneath his body. Males find a female that's getting ready to molt. Uh, they find her because she releases a special pheromone, a uh, communication hormone, in her urine, and they smell it, they come a running. Biggest male wins the female. He then guards the female. He will actually kind of, it's called cradling, he will arch his body over hers, and he can stay like that for days. He'll move around with her. He'll protect her. He waits for her to molt. And when she finally does molt, when her shell is still soft, that's when they mate. And she will store that sperm for a year or more bef before she finally fertilizes the eggs and produces that, that I talked about earlier with the, at least a million eggs inside. So bigger males have an advantage in reproduction. Females, a bit of an advantage. A bigger female can produce more eggs, of course. Um, 
but males are less assured of getting a girlfriend than females are assured of getting a boyfriend. So selection is on the males to be aggressive and tough. And I've been pinched, I think, by both. <laughs> and again, the bigger the crab, the more it hurts. How are you doing today, my little man? I appreciate you helping me out with this. Look at those beautiful claws. They're really neat. I just, as much as I um, talk about getting pinched by these, I just really have an affection for these animals. I like how when you put them into a tank, um, they just forget that they're captive and they start living their lives like normal. Um, not right now, because he, he likes to be in water. Um, this is uncomfortable for him, and I'll put him back in the water table in a minute. But blue crabs are just admirable in their attitude. They're pugnacious, they're bold, they're always looking for food, they're always hungry, and always looking to find a mate. So what do they, does he eat while he's guarding the females? You know, that's a good question. Um, I'm not even sure I know the answer. He, if she finds food during that time, she will certainly get to eat. Uh, whether they share it or not, I don't know. Um, my guess is that while he's guarding a female, he kind of goes on a hunger strike because he cannot simultaneously guard her and forage efficiently at the same time. Blue crabs eat anything, anything dead or living that they can catch. Uh, and they do have some predators that they have to worry about. Um, big fish that can crush the, the shell. Small blue crabs have to worry about bigger blue crabs because they are cannibals. They will eat each other. Um, but I think for, while he's mate guarding, he probably just goes on a fast. What is their lifespan? They can live several years. Um, that's one where I would probably have to look up exactly what the, the expected lifespan is. But yeah, they, they live for several years. It takes them about one year to reach full size, but they can hang around longer after that. So Jessica asks, do you ever think that a camera could be secured on a blue crab in order to observe its natural behavior? I love it. I love the idea of a critter cam on a blue crab. That would be a of gluttony, violence, and searching for mates. That would be the most amazing critter cam. I would love that. Now keep in mind, if you attach a critter cam to a blue crab, it only lasts until he molts. Um, all arthropods, whether they're bugs, you know, spiders, insects, or crustaceans like a blue crab, they have to molt to get bigger. And so the shell, um, here, let me see if I have the courage to boop this crab. Booping a blue crab is not recommended for the faint of heart. Boop. There, what I just touched when I booped him is, is not technically alive, it's chitin. And so it's good for attaching a, a camera because you wouldn't be able him at all to put glue on the back of the blue crab. But he would, he would molt that shell um, and leave the camera behind. And then when we talk about they'll eat anything, um, we had a question earlier about what's the best bait to catch them? Ooh, uh, stinky, stinky bait. When we, when we set traps to catch blue crabs, like this one uh, came in a, a crab trap that we threw off the dock, and the best bait is a dead fish. The deader, the better. Yeah. yeah, food can't get too stinky for a blue crab. There has never been such a thing as a blue crab finding something dead and saying, you know what, that's too gross, I'm not gonna eat it. So what is, in all of the years that you've done the um, behavior studies with your students, what are some of the interesting behaviors that you've noticed when it comes to like the big ones and the little ones or the fighting or, um, you know, booping each other? <laughs> yeah, blue crabs definitely, uh, we, we may boop them, but they don't boop each other. You know, one we've seen sometimes when we put them in these little kitty wading pools is we will see a male and a female if we pair them up he will guard her which amazes me because again we've taken them from the wild put them in this literally a plastic wading pool and what do they think about oh girlfriend boyfriend yay you gotta love animals like that so I've seen that behavior another thing that's kind of interesting is um, last time we tested the hypothesis that they would be more aggressive if they're more size matched, it turns out that the ones that gave the most merrill displays, the ones who did the most um, claw out displays, were actually the little crabs paired with the big one. 
Um, and so that kind of tells me that the, the Merrill display, where they do this claws out thing, it may be an appeasement display. It may be them saying, please don't destroy me. I'm not worth your time. I'm just a little blue crab. I'm not going to mess with you. We're friends, right? And so I think more studies are needed to be done to, to find out what the function of the Merrill displays are. I've also found them used between big adult crabs who are just about to go into a fight. So I think the Merrill display may have multiple meanings. It may be, leave me alone and I'll, I'll leave you alone. Or it could be, want to fight? And so uh, both of these things are possible. Um, and then the last question, well, we have two final questions. Um, one is, do blue crabs practice cannibalism? They absolutely do. Uh, one of the things a little blue crab has to worry about is big blue crabs. Um, they can crack the shell and consume them. So yeah. Now one that's this big, hey, hey guy, boop. One that big is probably safe. It would take a heck of a blue crab to take care of him. This is about as big as they get. Um, I've seen them a bit bigger. They get up to 20 centimeters. Uh, but yes, a small one absolutely runs the risk of dying. And then the last question that we have is, in the summer there are blue crabs at the shoreline, females with brown and orange color egg sponges. Are they releasing their eggs? Really good question. They're just about to. Uh, the browner, the sponge, that is the, the darker brown the eggs are, the more close the crab is to releasing them. When, they, when the sponge is first produced, it's kind of bright orange. And as it matures, it becomes brown. And what the females do as the eggs are close to being ready is they will move into very high saline water. They typically mate in brackish water estuaries, like around Dauphin Island, especially on the sound side and in salt marshes where there's kind of a mix of fresh and salt water. But then the female moves closer to the ocean and releases those young uh, into more highly saline, kind of full salt water ocean. So wrapping up, um, Marina did want to know if we have names for these individual guys. And <sighs> I would love to give them names. I don't have names. Since this guy, let's come up with a name right now for this guy. Since blue crabs have an attitude Let's name him Dustin, and here's why. I'm going to call him Dustin, because I watched a movie once. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's a famous one. It has a famous scene with Dustin Hoffman walking through the streets of New York, and he's hit by a car, and he slams on the hood of the car and says, I'm walking here, and that's a very blue crab thing to do. Blue crabs are like the Dustin Hoffmans of the animal kingdom, so let's name this one Dustin, and the female... I don't know. Could we have her be Justine? That way we'd have Dustin and Justine, the crabs. I like those names. I think those will work. But if anyone out there in internet land wants to suggest an alternative name, we can do that too. Well, Dr. Gear, thank you so much uh, for answering questions with our Facebook friends this morning. And um, we appreciate it. Oh, and Kevin, Midnight Cowboy. Ooh, that is it, Kevin. You got it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank We're you, guys. There she is. Bye, Justine.